Hi, my name is Raj. I'm a level 7 solutions architect at AWS. Not only did I crack the AWS interview on my very first attempt, but over the past 6 plus years, I have also conducted more than 300 interviews with prospective candidates. I know exactly what it takes to break into and thrive in big tech. And today, I am sharing everything I have learned with you. But before we dive into the exact framework that helped me and hundreds of my students land their dream jobs, I want to share where this journey started. Because I hear this all the time. Raj, I did not go to a fancy college. I don't have connections. There is no way I could ever get into big tech. Let me tell you something. Back in 2006, I was a skinny immigrant fresh off the plane holding a work visa and an electronics degree from a third tier college in India. I had zero connections in the US, let alone in big tech. I felt lucky to get my first job working on mainframes. Pretty legacy technology, right? If you'd tell me then that one day I would be designing world-scale cloud solutions speaking on global stages and helping thousands of students break into big tech, I would have said you are shitting me. But here we are. So let's dive into the exact framework that helped me crack Amazon and the hidden lessons I have learned from interviewing hundreds of candidates. Let's start with the most obvious part of a tech interview, technical questions. Let's say an interviewer asks, What's the difference between SQL and NoSQL? Very common question, right? And you reply, SQL holds structured data, NoSQL handles semi-structured or unstructured data. SQL needs a schema, NoSQL is schemaless. Sounds correct, right? Yes, but that's just the bare minimum. Here is what the interviewer is really looking for. You start with the structure versus semi-structure, non-structure, then you talk about the schema, schema-less, but then you also talk about how SQL databases needs to scale vertically for the writer instances and no SQL databases scale horizontally. How SQL databases support complex queries and joins, no SQL databases do not support complex joins. Then talk about ACID versus CAP theorem. Even better, you can delight the interviewer by going one level deeper. You add, for example, at company X, during a release of a very popular product, we chose DynamoDB to hold the information and the price of that product. DynamoDB scales horizontally while maintaining low latency reads. We avoided complex joins by denormalizing the data model and ensured consistency using conditional rights. Boom, that's a winning answer. Here is what I do. I study interview questions beforehand, write them down in a spreadsheet and ask myself, how can I make this answer stand out? I bring in hands-on experience, examples from real world projects and show my depth and nuance. That's how I went from good candidate to hell yes, hire this person. But having deep, delightful technical answers is only one piece of the puzzle. Here is the real reason many strong candidates still get rejected. This is where many candidates stumble. They think I answered the question. The interviewer just did not like me. I used to believe that too until I started sitting in the deep brief sessions after interviews, I saw the real reason candidates were rejected. You must answer the question behind the question. When we ask behavioral questions, we are not just looking for what you did. We want to know how do you approach complex problems? Can you prioritize? Do you show leadership? Are you capable of high judgment? Do you understand the business impact? Let me give you an example. So this is a weak answer. I optimize our database queries 
They ran 20% faster. I was promoted after. A strong answer will look like this. Our marketplace was losing $50,000 daily due to slow load times. As a tech lead, I prioritized this issue because we were on track to lose $1.5 million that month. I analyzed 100 plus queries across three critical services, tuned the top 20 bottlenecks, reducing latency by 90%, boosted daily revenue by $1.2 million, scaled the system for Cyber Monday with 20x normal load, and documented these patterns to help four other teams. Same work, 10x the impact. You have to tell the full story. Not just what you did, but why it mattered. Presentation matters. Knowing is not enough. A few quick tips. Document project wins while they are fresh in your memory. Quantify everything. Time, money, performance. Use structured storytelling, specifically in star format. Prepare examples that show strategic thinking and not just tactical troubleshooting. All right, I'm sharing something secret and new today. I built a cheat sheet for my bootcamp students to help them ace their behavioral interviews. I'll give the link to grab this in the description so that you can go download it and format your interview answers based on those. But even with great technical depth and storytelling, there is one last piece you need to know. This one is a silent killer. You don't even realize it's costing you opportunities until someone points it out. And frankly, most people aren't. It's awkward. But this is why so many candidates get overlooked and why they do not grow inside their company as well. Here is a story from my own life. I wanted to move from legacy enterprise projects to a modern cloud team. I bumped into a director and said, Hi, I am Raj. I have my AWS Solutions Architect certifications. I have done proof of concepts on Kubernetes, set up CI CD pipelines with Jenkins, no GitOps, Lambda, DynamoDB, and event driven architecture. He smiled, thanked me, and walked off to buy a $9 coffee. That was it. I didn't hear from him ever again. Why? Because I made the conversation all about tech. But executives don't care about tools. They care about outcomes. Let's redo that pitch. Hi, I am Raj. I lead projects on the mainframe team for telecom billing. My work reduced call-in rates by 15% quarter over quarter, saving millions of dollars. I have built proof of concepts on AWS within company security standards, showing how we can modernize and hit business goals. Everything is documented in the company bid bucket. I would love to demo what I have built. May I connect with your executive assistant for a short meeting? That's the language of business. And that's exactly what I used to talk to the director of the cloud team in Verizon that got me the interview in that team. Speak the language of your audience. Imagine you love football and someone starts rambling about hockey statistics. Technically impressive, sure, but you are not hooked. Same thing in interviews. If your hiring manager is non-technical, please do not drown them in technical acronyms. Show them impact. If they are technical, awesome. They will ask deeper questions and then you can unleash your technical depth with that delight not meet framework. Master these three pillars. Technical depth plus delight. Behavioral storytelling with business impact and executive communication. Remember, you do not need to be the smartest person in the room. You just need to be the most prepared one. The most important part of my Amazon journey began long before I got my first AWS site and long before I gave my interview. The most important thing for me was believing that I could do it. And if I can do it, so can you.